Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Alan Astro Photography back here with another tutorial within PixInsight for those who have one shot color cameras and today we're going to be showing you how to make a so called Hubble palette version with a one shot color camera using a dual narrowband filter using a hydrogen alpha and O3 bandpass. In this example I'm going to be using my Optolong L Extreme filter which has both hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 band passes but we're also going to figure out how to get those nice rainbow colors like for those who have monochrome cameras who shoot in hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, and sulfur 2. Now the one thing is to keep in mind your image cannot be stretched. As you can see we're starting off with this black image here with my monkey head nebula. We're just using an auto stretch here. Now you have to make sure you have done dynamic background extraction, blur exterminator if you happen to have that tool. I'll leave that in the comments below so you can see uh, of how to purchase it and learn a bit more information on what blur exterminator is and it makes sure that your image is already color calibrated with SPCC spectrophotometric color calibration. Once you have done that, we're ready to start getting into the meat and potatoes of how to get this so-called Hubble palette view. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take our image here and we're going to split our RGB channels with this tool right here. So we're going to split our RGB channels. So we're going to have a red channel, a blue channel, and a green channel. Right, so after we do that, our red channel here is probably what's going to have all of our hydrogen alpha data. And you can see it is very, very rich in hydrogen alpha. So we're going to go ahead and name this one HA because we're going to be using this for our hydrogen alpha. And we're just going to minimize that and keep that off to the side. Now we'll be we auto stretch both the green and the blue. They're not as strong, but this is where our oxygen 3 is going to be located. But we're not going to just simply add both of these images together since one is going to be significantly less noisy than the other. Like the green channel has a lot more detail than the blue channel. So what we're going to have to do for this step here is open up some pixel math because we're going to combine these two channels together to make our oxygen 3 so we're gonna to go to all process and we're gonna go find a pixel math and make sure that this is clear here we're just gonna use the RGBK expression use a single expression and we're gonna be using this pixel math script right here which is going to be the letter G but we have to make sure first that we have named our channels here which is green and our blue channel with the letter B. So we gotta go ahead and get that all set up. So we're gonna be using the script G times 0 0.7 plus blue, which is our blue channel, times that by 0 0.3. And we're gonna make sure we create a new image and we're gonna make sure it is grayscale. We're gonna go ahead and apply. And this should be our Oxygen 3 channel here. So it looks a little bit better than it does. So we're going to go ahead and name this Oxygen 3. So now we're going to put that aside right next to our HA. And we're left with these green and blue channels. We're just going to minimize these and put them off to the side because we are not going to need these anymore. So now we have our hydrogen alpha and we have our oxygen 3. So where are we going to get our S2? Since technically with our dual narrowband filter we don't shoot sulfur 2 whatsoever. So in kind of retrospective we have to so called fake it. And the best way to do that is actually extract the luminance layer of our original image here. And when we do that, we're going to be able to get our so-called sulfur 2 data when we auto stretch this out. So there we go. There's our so-called sulfur 2. We're just going to name that as sulfur 2 here. And now we have our three channels that we are going to be using. Our hydrogen alpha, our oxygen 3, and our sulfur 2. So 
the next thing we're going to do is you need to make sure that you have a processing suite known as EZ Processing Suite. Now you can find this, I'll have the details of where to find this uh, script down below in the comments in the description so you can use this to so-called now stretch our images but they all have to be the same exposure that's going to be very important because you don't want one that's going to be overwhelming the other one so we're going to go over to the easy processing suite under scripts and we're going to go to easy soft stretch so we're going to go to each of our images here and you can just use the default settings and just run the soft stretch all right so we have now stretched our oxygen 3 we're gonna go back over, same thing, script, easy processing suite, and then go over to soft stretch. Make sure our hydrogen alpha is selected and we run the easy soft stretch for that one. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our sulfur two. Go over to easy processing suite, soft stretch. Make sure S2 is located and we go ahead and run it. So now when we have all three of our channels, they are at the same stretched level all the way around. So now we are set to go ahead and combine our channels. Now this one's going to be very important because we're going to be once again going to our pixel math here. And there is a series of pixel math that I have found online from a website called The Coldest Nights. Now this uses a very, very specific script to combine all three of these channels. So I'm not gonna be speaking out these portions because it is gonna be a whole bunch of letters, but I will have these down in the, in the description. So you just go ahead and copy and place it right into your pixel map. So you don't have to try and type this out because it is quite long. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to uncheck the single use RGBK expression. And we're going to first start off with the R channel, which is our red. And we're going to be using this pixel max script right here in our red channel. Now we go over to our green channel and we're going to copy this one here for our green channel. And then finally, for our blue, just simple oxygen three. And we're gonna make sure that we're going to create a new image. And it's very important to select your color space as RGB color. Once you have those three combined, you hit the apply. And it's gonna run through that script. And you start to get something a little bit like this. You start to see a little bit of some greens and you start to see a little bit of some blues and some golds and some of those reds. This is where our all three channels have been combined. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna play with some color mask here so we can really start bringing out the colors. But first things first, we don't wanna to touch our stars here since they have been color calibrated and we don't want them to include into our editing of the nebula overall so we're going to be using the star exterminator tool if you have that if not starnet will also be a good alternative as well so we're going to safely remove our stars here and be able to start playing around with a little bit of some color mask this process will take a few moments here all right, now that we have safely removed our stars, we're gonna minimize this image. And now we are left with the nebula. Now, one of the best things I like to use for doing color mask is using this wonderful tool that Adam Block has made here recently in the past about a week or so. And it is a modified color mask script, which I will also include down in the description of how to get this and a link to his video of how to install this because this is a very, very amazing tool here. And as you see, we have a color wheel and we have our image towards the right, which you can actually interact with the preview image here and you'll be able to actually click on the image to get the accurate colors. So we can adjust our color mask here 
with just a few sliding tools. So we're going to be messing with the greens a little bit. So we're going to be messing with their tools here. Just to kind of get a little bit of a range of where we're going to be using this image. Just kind of like click around to see where your uh, colors are going to be in this color wheel of what you want to use. So I'm actually going to tone this back a little bit here. We're going to be focusing between the green and yellow. And to make sure to put a little bit of a blur layer on there. I usually like to use two. And once you click OK, it will actually generate a color mask for you. And as you can see here, we have a little bit of those greens popping out. And all you have to do is bring this right over and apply that color mask. So when we do that, we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to hide this mask because we want to be able to actually see what's going on. And then we're going to go over to our curves transformation. So we're going to be doing a preview window here so we can actually increase the contrast of the overall image. So you can start seeing a little bit of seeing yellows beginning to pop out. If I want to add a little bit more green to it, I can bring that out just a little bit, but I can also completely change it up and not just being focused on the green, I can also change it to blue. So you start to see a little bit more blue beginning to work out for the colors here. Also increase the saturation, be a little bit more blue. So we're going to keep playing around with this to kind of bring more of that natural blues and the nice goals that are surrounding this. So you can keep going back and forth with this script inside of PixInsight that Adam Block has made. And it's been a, <laughs> an absolute helpful, helpful tool over the past week or so. So now we're going to start working on our reds a little bit here. You can see we can just go ahead and click it onto here and just kind of get a little bit closer to where you want the color spectrum to be and you can just keep doing this over and over again until you get the color spectrum that you like so now we have our red and gold channel I'm gonna bring this over put this off to the side here we're gonna go back to our preview window for the curves transformation I'm gonna start playing around with the saturation you start to see it's getting a little bit more reddish there. You can also tone up the reds a little bit more as well if you want to have it like that. You start playing with each individual aspect of the color spectrum. So you can bring up a little bit more of the blue. Bring down some green or add some green as a matter of fact. You start getting more of those uh, goldish colors. That looks good right there. So we're gonna extract that back out, delete our current mask, and I'm gonna go over one more time. I wanna bring some more of those blues in. So I'm gonna go back to our script and utilities for the color mask modification. I'm gonna zoom back in on our image and all this like greenish and yellowish that I see right here. I'm gonna start to bring those out a little bit more, but I'm going to be actually changing those more to a blue since it's more to a traditional Hubble palette. It looks more blue in this area. So we're going to keep hiding our mask through here. Reopen our curves transformation. And we're going to select the blue tab. And then we're going to bring in some more of these blues. We're going to increase the saturation as well so it kind of stick out a little bit more. It's starting to look a little bit more purple though, so we're going to bring back those reds. You kind of have to keep constantly working on this image to kind of get it to where you want it or these different uh, areas. go. 
All right, so we're starting to get there a little bit more. Then we're gonna do one final tweak here. We're gonna go into the processes and use the range mask. Or should I say the range selection tool. Click the preview button. So we're gonna restart that over. And we're just gonna get the nebula itself. Play with these sliders here, give it a little bit of some fuzz. I like to really go aggressive on the fuzz. So I can get the individual details and then I'm gonna blur that mask up. Good overall image and we're gonna increase some saturation. Increase the blues a little bit more. Bring down the reds. So play with the green a little bit to kind of make that nice icy look. There we go. That looks pretty good right there. I like that. Go ahead and apply that. Ooh, we can even increase it a little bit more too. We go to the blue. Increase the blue a little bit more. This is trial and error. You just gotta keep messing with the curves layer. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna back that off. And it's gonna increase the overall saturation just a little bit more. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. So that's gonna be the final step for that. Then after that is all said and done, we are going to use Noise Exterminator to get out a lot of that background noise. Let that run its course. It takes a moment or two. It's pretty quick normally. There we go. All right, now the final step we need to do, I'm just gonna rename these because it's just gonna be easier to add together. We're gonna add that as Starless. And we're going to have this as stars. So then we go into pixel math once more. Make sure we clear a selection. And we're going to do starless plus stars. Create a new image. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now you have your false one shot color. Hubble palette that you can keep playing with the colors. We got this nice deep reds, the blues, even a little bit of some greens. Out of this, where originally it looked like this. So it adds a little bit more of some beautiful eye catching colors, and it's fairly simple to do. So I hope this tutorial helps out a lot. I plan on doing a lot more of these kind of tutorials to kind of help those wanting to learn how to use PixInsight more. So if you like this, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about this channel here. I will greatly appreciate it very much. And as always, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video.